Hi everyone. I thought I'd make a short screencast about how to create the Orton effect using Darktable's editing tools. If you're not familiar with the Orton effect, it's commonly used in landscape photos to give them a sort of an ethereal glow, uh, make them look a little dreamy. And uh, it used to be accomplished with film by creating two exposures, uh, one of which was a little out of focus and slightly overexposed, and then stacking them. But uh, it's commonly done now with Photoshop by using layers and creating Gaussian blurs and changing blend modes and those sorts of things. But uh, it can be accomplished very easily to a number of different ways. I'm going to talk about two of them in Darktable without creating any layers and doing it completely non-destructively. So here's a landscape image that I made uh, last spring when the water was flowing pretty heavily up in the Bushkill Falls area. And uh, I've done a good bit of processing to it already. If we take a look at the original image here, the way it looked coming out of camera, it was a nice image, a little bit, little bit flat, a little bit hazy. So I've done my normal adjustments to get the image to where I'd like it to be. But at this point, it maybe starts to look a little bit, shall we say, digital and a little bit sterile. Uh, it's very crisp and clean. Uh, sharpness is great but it just, I don't know, it doesn't have the feeling that I'm quite looking for. So here's where I might use the Orton effect. To do the Orton effect in Darktable, I'm going to go into the effects group and I'm going to apply a low pass filter to the image. Okay, so we see here under low pass filter, I'm going to turn that on, I have a number of options. The first option is the radius at which I want to blur the image. So it's currently set at a default of 10. I've heard that a good way, good rule of thumb here is to blur the image by the number of pixels that's equivalent to the number of megapixels in your camera. So I'm going to crank this up to about uh, 18. I'll just type that in. Blur by 18 pixels. Now I want to increase the contrast. So I'm just going to drag the contrast up a little bit. I'm not going to get carried away with it. And I also want to bump up the brightness. So I'm going to make the whole thing a little bit brighter. And what this is going to do is it's going to cause the highlights to bleed into the shadows a little bit. Okay, I could also play around with the saturation here. Why don't we just turn that up a little bit more. Now, the image looks terrible. So what I need to do is I need to blend this adjustment with the original image. So down here in blend modes, I'm going to say uniformly and my blend mode that I'm going to choose is normal and then I'm simply going to turn down my opacity until I get the kind of look that I want. So you can see if I go somewhere around 50% it's very dreamy looking maybe a little bit too much. I'm pretty happy with it somewhere down in the 30% range. So what do we got here? Let's turn the effect on and off to see. So if I turn it off, that's the original image with all my other adjustments applied to it. If I turn it back on, it's still razor sharp, but takes on a slightly more dreamy look to it as the highlights and the shadows tend to bleed into one another a little bit. Let's take a snapshot of this. And that way we can look at another way to achieve this effect. So I'm going to turn the low pass filter off. And I'm going to now use the soften module, which allows me to create a similar effect even more easily. So I'll turn soften on. And we see that soften immediately gives us the, uh, the effect overall. And I don't even have to go into blend modes. I can take uh, my mix lever here and just drag it down to get the desired effect to where I want it to be. I can change saturation and brightness. This doesn't give me control over contrast, but it also gives me control over the blur size uh, by in percentage terms rather than in pixel terms. So I'll leave that at default. Now, uh, let's take a look at the comparison between these two. So I'm going to take the snapshot from the original 
and now I can look at the low pass filter version here on the, that's now on the screen and as I slide over I can see the softened version which seems to be a little bit uh, lighter softer I could play with the brightness to probably get it closer and the mix level maybe but you see there's a couple different ways to create very similar effects so that's it. I thought you might be interested in this. Orton Effect is something that uh, is pretty commonly used in landscape photography and something that you can use to enhance your photographs today. Thanks. Have a good day.